inside the other night. Yeah, I'm really anxious to see what adjustments this Pac-12 team makes on Baines. Too many deep post-ups. What's their screen roll coverage tonight? Here's Patty Mills. Shovels it and down the lane. Joe angles a slam and a great start for the Aussies on the first possession. Well, apparently the adjustments aren't going to start till the second possession <laughs> because that, there was too much of that the other night. Ingles finishes with a dunk to open up the game. So the Aussies attack the rack. Pac-12 got off to a good start, led by as many as seven in the first quarter against the Boomers two nights ago. Uh, and the offense wasn't an issue the other night. And Bonham was aggressive. He was in double figures, misses that one. But it's really all on this end for the Pac-12 team defensively. Joe Ingles short on a three rebound run down by Kevin Lish in a Boomers reset. You know, Mike Montgomery's been flip-flopping starting lineups. You get the feeling this is the lineup that's kind of earned the start here in their last game in Australia. Smaller lineup, Wesley Gordon being the anchor on the back line. Off balance, pull up, missed by Baines. Brock Modem, the former Washington State Cougar, the offensive rebound is the Aussies control the boards in game one, and early in game two, they're doing the same. I was just going to say that they, they dominated in the second half on the offensive glass. Pac 12 teams got to clean that up. Out of bounds off of Aaron Baines, and a Pac 12 ball. Mills a tough guard and a little DHO dribble handoff. No rotation for the Pac-12 team. Mike Montgomery, the Hall of Famer, coaching the Pac-12 team. Andre LeMann is third-year coaching the Boomers. Is this team getting ready for the Olympics in Rio? Uh, you mentioned in, in our open, Matthew Delavadova playing tonight. Didn't play the other night because he get, didn't get his insurance cleared. But we should see him at some point tonight. No Andrew Bogut tonight for the Aussies. Still out when he got hurt in Game 5 of the NBA Finals for the Golden State Warriors. And they're hoping to have him in Rio. A foul as Joe Ingles attacks, and it's on Lorenzo Bonham. I mentioned Bonham being aggressive. He had 12. Pickens was good off the bench for the Pac-12 team. And Kadeem Allen, really aggressive, made some shots early. He had 15, but... You know, it could be any one of these guys. We talked about that the other night. There's enough good players on this Pac-12 team that any one of them could lead them in scoring in any of these games. They reach in on Steven Domingo as Brock Modem took the pass underneath. You know what I was just thinking about, Roxy? What a credit to his work ethic and st sticking with it and will and determination that we are literally promoting Matthew Della Vadova. Right? Who would ever thought that five years ago? But now the guy's a world champion with the Cleveland Cavaliers, and we're promoting him in this game. One more for Brock Modem, a two-time All-Pac-12 performer from Washington State. He was fifth in Cougar history in scoring. 6.7 boards in game one. He hits both, and the Aussies are up 4 nothing. as there is the former Utah Ute Andrew Bogan on the end of the bench with David Anderson, who will not play tonight for the Boomers. After a strong effort in game one, the oldest player on the uh, Aussie roster get, gets a maintenance day. Yeah, wily old veteran. But when you play that long, you get to choose when you want to play, especially when it's exhibitions. Kadeem Allen attacks and gets the Pac-12 on the board. He is so good at that, slashing, using his body, getting to the rim. Off to another good start here tonight for the Pac-12 team. Patty Mills from deep. And a three for Patrick Mills. He loads really quick. You got to stay attached to him. Coming off the screens, that was just a simple catch and shoot. But you see how fast he gets it away. Can't give him any airspace. Much better start for the Boomers tonight as Lorenzo Bonham buries one from beyond the arc. Well, he's going to need to do that for Utah this year. They're missing some scoring. Bryce Taylor gone. He was their three-point bomber. Bonham not known for the three ball. But I think he'll be improved this year in that area for Utah. Aaron Baines misses from the outside. Brock Modem runs it down for the Boomers. Joe Ingles launches. And Modem hustles and throws it out of bounds off of Steven Domingo. And it's an Aussie basketball. And all the hustle plays go to the Boomers. Yeah, you see Kadeem Allen on the finish on the other end. You want the good news or the bad news, Roxy? The good news is you got Aaron Bain shooting jumpers. The bad news is the other Australian players are getting his misses. The offensive rebounding for Australia, a major problem for the Pac-12 team. And the Pac-12 controls the rebound. Trey Holder, the Arizona State Sun Devil, draws the foul way out top, and it's on Modem hedging out. 
in the first whistled against the Boomers. It's an interesting lineup. We already touched on it. it for the Pac-12 team, a smaller lineup, maybe for more perimeter shooting. Open up some driving lanes for Bonham and Holder and those guys. Plus there's a lot of speed and quickness with yeah. this group. And I'm wondering if maybe, haven't seen it much yet, but switching on defense as well. When you have smaller guys, quicker guys, easier to switch on the perimeter especially. Josh Hawkinson checks in for Steven Domingo as the shot off the mark from Wesley Gordon. Well, and Hawkinson can step out too, even though he's a bigger player, he's at stretch four. We talked about him the other night and his ability to pick and pop and hit perimeter shots. Brock Modem from long range. You know, Hawkinson is 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 doing the Brock Modem at Washington State. Kind of the same career trajectory. Didn't play much early, but then super uh, productive later in their careers at Washington State. Fallon Aaron Baines of the Aussies. And here's a look at the Pac-12 All-Star team and almost every team represented. Yep. A good, a good group. Mike Montgomery's talked about how much he's like coaching these guys and a great experience for them. Yep. Here's the floater off the inbound. Aaron Baines clears as Matthew Della Vidova has checked in for the Aussies and the rebound numbers already, already for the Pac-12. Well, they can't win this game unless they clean that up. And let's see if they can kind of stop the bleeding on that offensive board. Joe Ingles lobs to Aaron Baines. First bucket for Baines. Australia looks a little more, I don't know, in rhythm to start this game offensively than they were on Tuesday night. Pac-12 got out to an early lead, not tonight. And there's the rules coming into play. Instead of a 10-second violation, it's an 8-second violation international ball and a turnover by the Pac-12. Well, in a real problem because you got Patty Mills and Matthew Della Vadova who are really aggressive on the ball defender, so they they can't expect Holder or any of the point guards to get it across by themselves. Plus playing with a 24 second shot clock and a deeper three point line here tonight. Three point line didn't affect the Pac-12 team the other night. 11 of 23, that's a really good percentage. I thought it might but uh, they were able to knock down threes, and I don't really think any of the rules have impacted the game or didn't have a major effect. Foul called, and going to the line will be the Aussies. As Australia attacking, you see a good crowd on hand at High Sense Arena, which also serves as court number two. This is the National Tennis Center in Melbourne, Australia, where they have the Australian Open. And so High Sense Arena has a retractable roof, and this serves as court two when they have the Aussie Open. Multifunctional. Kind of like you, Roxy. <laughs> Versatile. You got to be. You got to be. You got to wear a few hats. Joe Ingles, seven points, five rebounds, four assists in game one. Plays for the Utah Jazz. Average four points a game. Just finished his second year. He misses both. And the rebound secured by the Pac-12, and it's Kadeem Allen. Well, one of the things that the Pac-12 has to get going here is the pace of play. That was one of the... The, the keys to the game for the Pac-12 team is you can't get into a half-court game with this Australian team. They're going to wear you down, and they did in the second half the other night because the, the pace slowed down. Let's see if they can get some stops and start getting the ball down the court a little bit faster. Steven Domingo misses from deep. Patty Mills runs it up for the Boomers. See, that just can't happen. Simple drag screen by Baines. Miscommunication by the big. He gets a free run right to the front of the rim. What a pass by Patty Mills. You know, I don't think college players, Roxy, get good at team defense until they play professionally. I mean, you can be okay at it, and some college teams are better at it than others. But individually, to be a good team defender, I feel like you got to play a couple more years in professional basketball because that's when it just becomes instinct. The cleanup inside by the birthday boy, Wesley Gordon. Uh, beat them at their own game on that possession. Gordon with the stick back. And let's face it, this Pac-12 All-Star team, Don, they've only been together yeah. for a little over a week. Yeah. It's almost impossible to ask them to come beat, you know, an, a good Olympic team. Not not a great one, not a team that can probably beat the U.S. team or any of the good Spain. But this is a good Olympic team getting ready for the Olympics. And it looks like this Australian team's a little more engaged tonight, at least to start. Steven Domingo off on the three. Matthew Della Vidova runs it up one on three. Attacks, draws a foul. He'll go to the line. And Mike Montgomery, a little disgruntled with that call, wondering where was the foul. And 
he had company on the bench jumping up. Watch Casey Jenkins and Brevin Knight both jump up off the bench. Yeah, I don't see the foul there. The hand was on him, but there was no advantage gained by Domingo. A little bit of home cooking down under. LMU product, Damian Martin there on the bench looking to get in for Australia here as Matthew Delavadova will shoot to. And didn't play in the first game of this exhibition series. And one more for Delhi, who plays college ball in the Bay Area at St. Mary's, where he has his number retired. Won an NBA title with the Cavs, but it acquired in a sign and trade deal a little over a week ago by Milwaukee. So we'll play for Jason Kidd and the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, impressive he's out there. I mean, it is a long NBA season, but really long if you get all the way to the finals. And he spins it right back around, what, about a month later here? Not even. Yeah. And uh, getting ready for the Olympics with this Australian team. There's a strip and a steal. Mills to the basket. Foul by Kadeem Allen is wondering, did I touch him? That and one may on Allen. that one may have been more than a foul, but didn't it seem like the whistle blew before he even shot it? Yeah. Let's take a look at that. Let's see if we have any audio on that. I swear the whistle blew before he even shot it. Anticipation. Well, yeah, contact down low a little bit, but certainly call is going Australia's way right now. One more for Mills. Fifteen points, four assists. In game one, there's a look at the NBA champions with this Australia team. It's Mills hits both, and you mentioned this is a very good international team. In the latest FIBA rankings, the, the Boomers, the Australian senior national team, are ranked number 11 in the world. Well, we talked about that the other night, Roxy. I think it's a team, do I think they're going to medal? Probably not. But is it a team that you want to play? Probably not either. You know, they're a team that can rise up if they get going from the perimeter and Baines can establish himself. They're going to be a tough out in the Olympics for sure. Damian Martin is steal. Reverse missed by Mills. The rebound tipped out of bounds. Last touch by the Boomers, and it belongs to the Pac-12. Well, you get Mills to miss in transition, but another opportunity for Australia on the offensive board. Good crowd enjoying this one. The second tune-up matchup for the Boomers in Melbourne. They're making these guards work, too. Holder already 1-8 second violation. Just does get it across again. Alex Marich is in for the Boomers, the big man who played his college ball in Nebraska, who is an injury replacement for Andrew Bogut. And there is a look at Kevin Lish, who played his college ball in St. Louis. He was actually born in Belleville, Illinois. Cameron Bairstow in as well. Drive and the roll. Lorenzo Bonham attacks. Calling it pretty tight tonight. The other night it seemed like they were letting some stuff go, a little more physical. Everything being called if you go to the rim. See if the Pac-12 can recognize that, not settle for jumpers and try and get in there, get to some bodies, get contact, and get to the line. Foul on Alex Marich of Australia. And Bonham has shot his free throws at 82% last year for Larry Kraskowiak and the Utes. Although that's not a way to get the pace going. You know, getting to the foul line. They need to get this more free-flowing up and down, the Pac-12. Off a screen, launching Ryan Brokaw from deep. And Kevin Lish hustles to keep it alive for the Boomers again getting the offensive rebound and feel, second chance. I feel like they've gotten second and third chance on almost every possession tonight so far. Kevin Lish from the corner. Uh, and then another defensive breakdown and Lish wide open in the corner. He's not going to miss that shot twice. Much better start for the Aussies here tonight. Well, the Pac-12 team answered in the second half when it looked like Australia was going to run away with it. They couldn't come all the way back, but they answered to make it a game late. Let's see if they can get back into this one. Not a good shot there. Kadeem Allen missing with a shot clock rolling down. Ryan broke off open. And Wesley Gordon tips the rebound to Trey Holder, who looks to run it. Got to convert here. And a foul on Matthew Delavadova. There's a shock of physical play from Delhi. Not the first time we've seen that from Delhi, huh? Well, now Trey Holder knows what Steph Curry feels like. <laughs> uh, Holder. That, that's nothing for Della Vadova and Holder. He hit a brick wall. 
wholesale changes for the Pac-12, the, the little hockey line change, as you have Jordan McLaughlin now running the point with Stevie Thompson Jr., Dorian Pickens, also Chance Comanche, and Drew Eubanks. Well, your job as a bench player is to come in and change the complexion of the game. Either extend the lead if you're up or try and get your team back in it. Let's see if this Pac-12 second unit tonight can come in with big-time energy and flip this thing around. So get, get the pace going, get some stops, and get out in transition. Fallon Drew Eubanks of the Pac-12. As first appearance for Chris Goulding, who did not play in game one because of an ankle injury, as Alex Marich goes to the line. So the injury replacement for Bogut. Marich, 6'11", 275. Big dude. Misses the first. He played at Nebraska where he was second team all Big 12 when the Cornhuskers were in the Big 12 before their move to the Big 10. But he went to high school in New Jersey. Before New Jersey, he was playing for the AIS, the Australian Institute of Sport. A lot of players have that career path where they start at the AIS and then come over to the States and wind up at a university and then a lot of them come back to Australia to play professionally. Matthew Delavidova, one of those, Brock Modem as well. Delavidova nice dishes to Marich, who can't get the layup and the rebound. Jordan McLaughlin races up the floor, approaching the final minute of this first quarter. McLaughlin will go to the line. I'm telling you, any player, either way, that's get, that gets in the lane is getting the foul called. If I'm a, if I'm a player on the Pac-12, I'm starting to recognize that and get myself to the line, as I mentioned earlier. So McLaughlin has shot his free throws for USC last season at 74%. Honorable mention, all Pac-12 was fifth in the conference in assists last year. You know what else he did last year, Roxy, is he raised his three-point field goal percentage from 27 to 42. And the thing I like about McLaughlin is he came to USC as a pure point guard, but he can play off the ball because he's become such a good shooter. So it'll be interesting to see with who they have this year, how much he's on the ball, how much he's off. Julian Jacobs gone. He was on the ball a lot last year. I have a feeling McLaughlin will be more on the ball this year than he was last year, but what a luxury for Andy Enfield that you can play him off if you want. Kevin Lish drives, dishes, the shot block. blocked by Drew Eubanks and a foul against the Aussies. What a play by Eubanks. Well, that's what you need coming off the bench. I mentioned it is some energy, some life, and Eubanks with a great help side block gets it, gets a recovery, and now he's going to the free throw line. So the Pac-12 in the bonus, and it's Drew Eubanks to the stripe, the Oregon State Beaver. 64% from the line last year, led Oregon State in block shots, made 30 starts as a freshman. Part of that great freshman class with Stevie Thompson Jr., who's also on this trip, and Trace Tinkle. He is a plus-one athlete, this Eubanks. We talked about him the other night being a pitcher for a long time. Hasn't played a ton of basketball, but in terms of athleticism, man, He's got a lot to work with. If his game can catch up to his body and his athleticism, he's going to be really good. He's this guy that's got a 90-mile-per-hour fastball. It's a three missed by Ryan Brokoff, and it's cleared by Drew Eubanks. How about 6'10", 240 on the hill, <laughs> staring you down, throwing 90? A little intimidating. Yeah. Stevie Thompson misses the runner. The rebound, Goulding got away with a walk. And the Aussies can play for the final shot of this opening quarter. Australia defense much better in the first quarter tonight than it was the other night. Pac-12's got to counter somehow, and again, I believe it's because of the pace. McLaughlin to steal. McLaughlin drives. Was looking for a foul, didn't get the call, and missed the layup. And that'll take us to the end of the opening quarter. The Aussies led by as many as 12. It's a nine-point game. Second quarter straight ahead. The Boomers up 22-13.